have to be, and that means saved, uh, having all their sins washed away, uh, having the new nature installed, uh, the Holy Spirit as our guide, all of these things is to be in Him, to be born again. And if you're not born again, then you need to be saved. Uh, salvation is of the most importance. This morning in our message this morning here in the auditorium, in Proverbs 22, we dealt with the fact that you need to see the evil afar off. And that word for evil there means the bad things that are coming your direction. And if you're not saved, hell is the bad thing coming your direction. And you need to be born again. If you're not, if you're not saved, uh, you can call it the judgment day. You can call it whatever you want to call the end of time, as some would call it. There is never an end of time. But whatever you want to call it, uh, you're going to end up in the lake of fire, not in heaven. The Bible said those whose names are not written in the book of life will be cast in to hell, uh, the lake of fire, which is the second death. And, uh, and that's just the way it is. And you need to be born again. Let's, let's look down if you would. And uh, wow, there's so much here. Let's look on down. Let's start in verse number one. We'll read just a couple of verses and pray. Uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and in the love which you have to all the saints. Let's pray. Father, we ask your blessing upon the precious word tonight. And Lord, we ask that you would help us as we study the uh, uh, book of Colossians. Lord, as we preach a few uh, messages out of the book of Colossians, that you'd help us to see how in incomparable Christ is. Nobody compares to him. He is the only way of salvation. He is your only begotten son. And Lord, we know that he is God in the flesh. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless our understanding of him, of our relationship with him, and what he does for us. We do pray now tonight for Miss Olive. Lord, we said we'd call her name, and we will at the end of the service as well. But we pray that tonight you'd be with Miss Olive, and Lord, do a work that even the doctors would be amazed about. Lord, we've heard of some others in the hospitals not doing well. And we ask, dear Father, that you would deal with their, their physical conditions and, dear Father, then deal with their spiritual conditions. We put them in your hands. Ask your blessing on the service. In Jesus' name, amen. We find in the book of Colossians, like I say, last week we preached the message on living like Christ is our Savior, living the way that we should live. Verse 10 of chapter 1 talks about walking worthy of the Lord. And then it says, unto all pleasing. We have it backwards today. Even in major uh, Christianity, we have it to where the Lord is supposed to be pleasing us rather than us pleasing Him. And the scripture is pretty clear. He's still God. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. Sometimes people, when they um, preachers, when they preach a message, they make it seem like that God's heartbroken in heaven because you hadn't come over to his side because you're so important to him. You are important to him. He loves you. But if you die and go to hell, it, you'll have to go against his will, but it won't make him sad in the end run because he's God. And it doesn't uh, change who he is or what he will do. We find that we're supposed to be walking worthy of him. And that's what last Sunday night's message was about. Uh, it says, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Uh, walking not in your own way, not in your own will, but walking in His way, what the Word of God says. Now that brings us to tonight where we look at some of the benefits that we have in Christ. And I probably will change that to a different word. Uh, uh, maybe when I go through and, and, and work on it a little bit more. But the benefits that we have in Christ. What happens to us? What do we receive because we are in Christ? Because we belong to Him. 
that he births us into his family. He gives us his name, and then he gives us many benefits. We want to, I want to start reading, and we'll read down to verse number five. And when we get to verse number five, we'll look at one of the benefits that we have. We've, we read already down through verse number four, where he talks about, we've heard of, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, not in a Baptist church, not in the church of Christ, uh, not in a Lutheran or a Methodist or a Catholic or a Presbyterian or you name whatever the different denominations are. It's not your faith in a church, it's your faith in Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It says, since we've heard of you in that, in that way, he calls them saints for the love of which you have to all the saints. Uh, the word saints here does not mean somebody that has been given an acclamation, a degree, uh, set up to be righteous, you know, as some of the churches do. Uh, I remember a little story that was told about a, a, the Baptist boy that went to the Catholic church with his friend. He asked him what all of those windows were and the, they were stained glass. He said, what, what are those people? He said, well, those are the apostles and the saints. And uh, the Baptist boy said, well, what, what does a saint do? He said, I don't know. I guess the light shines through them. And you know what? If you're a saint, the light's supposed to shine through you, isn't it? I like that little story because we're supposed to let the light of God's word and him and the light of his life within us shine through us. So we're supposed to be that way. But verse number five, one of the benefits that we have, it says, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? Now, what is the benefit? I didn't write any of the benefits down. I, I may have marked one or two. I don't think I did. But what benefit that we get from our salvation, get from being in Christ, do you find in this chapter? I'm going to ask you and let you give an answer. If anybody's brave enough. I heard it. It was a squeak, but I heard it. Hope. Hope. Yes. One of the benefits that we have is the hope, the assurance. And I want to, I want to talk about that, deal with that for just a moment. Uh, but the hope that we have, as said, which is laid up for you in heaven, the assurance. In 1 John chapter number 5, we find the, the scripture that says, These things have I written unto you, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That ye may know. That's that hope. It's not a hope so. It's not a maybe. See, that's the difference in, in the way the words are used today and the way that they were used then. This hope is an assurance that, that you are a child of God, but that you will receive the end of your salvation, as we find in another scripture, one day. You see, as we said many times, your body is not yet saved. That's why it's dying. From the time you're born to the time you die, your body's dying. The, uh, the dead cells fall off, off of you every day, dead skin cells. If, if you're like me and you wear those uh, support socks to keep your blood vessels working in your, in your leg, when I pull that black sock off at the end of every day, it looks like about a third of my leg is still on it. All of them dead skin cells are right there. Uh, we're dying every day. By the way, that odor that you have at the end of a hard day's work is death coming out of you. It's bacteria, and, uh, and that bacteria is dying. Uh, we're dying every day. But it says, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, your body is not yet saved. And, and by the way, your mind is not yet saved either. That's why you have trouble with it. But your soul, your spirit is saved. And you're going to receive the end of that. It's the hope which is laid up for you. And, I, I'm, and the way it's, I believe the Bible is written exactly correct. The, it is laid up for you. You didn't lay it up there. Somebody else laid it up there. Jesus himself provides your salvation. And that hope is laid up for you and is laid up in heaven. What do we know about heaven? The Bible tells us it's a place where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt where thieves cannot break through and steal. And, and it talks about all of those things. Your hope, 
the salvation, and, and, and the last part of the chapter tells us what your hope is in, and that's the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel. Because of that, you have a hope that the rest of the world does not have. It's important that you know that you have that hope. That's one of the things that keeps a Christian going during difficult times. They're all kind of difficult, difficult times. It may be a physical problem, sickness, some kind of thing that's uh, like that. It, it might be an emotional problem. It might be that you think somebody's mistreated you or maybe they have mistreated you and you're having an emotional battle about that. Uh, it could be uh, that it's a financial problem. Most of our financial problems are our own making. And I won't go into all of that, but most of the time it's our own fault. I remember in the uh, book of Psalms, David said that his own iniquities had overwhelmed him. David's biggest problem was the fellow that he shaved when he looked into that uh, mirror of whatever sort it was, probably a brass mirror in his day. Uh, but for the hope that's laid up for you in heaven, it says, wherefore ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You see, one of the benefits that we have over the rest of the world is that we have the promise of God. And boy, when you have the promise of God, you can take it to the bank and deposit it. It will come to pass. It may not come to pass the day you want it to. It's just like prayer. Prayer may not work the way you want it to, but it will work according to His will in heaven. We have the hope that is set up for us. Now let's read about five more verses. It says, which is come unto you as it is in the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, excuse me, since the day we heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Now, this isn't one of those benefits that, I mean, we could get one out of here, but it's about how that the word of God works in people just like it worked in you. That, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's important that we read the Bible to our children. That's why it's important that they learn what the Word of God says because it will work in their heart and in their lives. Uh, our grandchildren, they've heard, they've heard us pray for them. They've heard Miss Jan sing to them. Anytime she gets a chance, she'll sing a Christian song to them. And every now and then we get around them, uh, they'll, they'll say, Mimi or Nana, depending on which group of grandkids it is, and they'll say, what's that song? Let's sing that song. And boy, they just, they enjoy it. It changes them. And they need to hear the Word of God. They need to hear good Christian songs. But it's about the grace of God in truth, according to the last of that verse. As you also learn, verse 7 of Epaphras, of our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of the gospel. And by the way, that is a benefit that we have. I'm not going to deal with it tonight. And that is those who have gone before you ministering the Word of God. Boy, it's important. And it's not just the preacher. It may be the Sunday school teacher. It may be a grandparent. It may be a parent that ministers the Word of God to their children or to their neighbors. You see, that faithful servant, whoever they are, uh, who is a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the, in the Spirit. Uh, one of the other things that we have, and again, I'm not dealing with that tonight, is that when you get saved, you get the love of God in your heart. If you don't get saved, you don't have the love of God in your heart. You have the best you can do without the love of God. And that's not always enough. In fact, it's not ever enough. The love of God uh, changes you the way you think and the way you act. Now, do Christians always live within the love of God? No. Sometimes, just like with what's going on up in Washington, D.C. and with our government right now, uh, Christians are not always acting in the love of God. We're acting in our frustration sometimes. Uh, frustration causes us to lash out at people. Sometimes to lash out at family members. The, the, it's, the saying is that you hurt the ones the mo that you hurt the most are the ones you love the most. 
when you get frustrated. And we have to be careful of that, that we, we do need to live in the love of God. Uh, it goes on in verse number nine, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to, be, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And why do we need that? That you might walk worthy. See, you need what was given in verse nine in order that you might walk worthy in verse number 10. How can you walk worthy if you're not filled with the knowledge of his will? How can you walk worthy if you're not filled with the knowledge of his wisdom? How can you walk worthy if you're not filled with spiritual understanding? Most people have a head knowledge. I mean, people are intelligent today. There's no doubt about it. There, there's more studying. There are more books that are being written. Uh, there's more information passed on. In the book of Daniel, we find that one of the signs of the last days is knowledge would increase. And that's going on today. People are as smart as, as, as they, they can get today. Uh, of course, some of them got more education than they'll ever use, but, but many of them do not have spiritual understanding. You cannot walk worthy of the Lord unless you get spiritual understanding, unless you walk through your spiritual life. If, you, if everything you do is just through knowledge, then all you'll have is your religious activities you'll never go to the spiritual activities. And we need to go beyond the knowledge that we have. I, I remember as a kid, we traveled <clears throat> to whatever, uh, we went to church, what, to whatever church was close. And if it's close enough to walk, we walked. If it wasn't, uh, then somebody took us if my mother was working uh, or, or we got maybe even some other adult to bring us. But we would go to church and we moved close to a Lutheran church. I think it was St. Paul's Lutheran, I think, if I remember right. And, uh, and we got there. We moved over just in time to get in on the catechism, you know, the studying of what they believe. I didn't get to very many of their catechism classes. I believe it was just once a month, I think was all that it was. Uh, maybe it was once a week during the summer, whatever it was. Didn't get to many, and we moved on again. But in order to be a member there, the kids had to go through catechism and say, yes, I believe this. Yes, I believe this. The Methodists did it. I went to one of my uh, friends who was in uh, United. No, it was before they united. It wasn't a United Methodist, but it became one after the, they united the churches. It was a Methodist church. And I went to his graduation where he became become a member of that church. And uh, afterwards, I said, do you believe that? He said, no, but I had to say it. And that's the truth with many people. They're religious, but they don't believe and they don't practice it. Uh, look, if, if you, verse 10 again, that you might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's what we get. But now the benefit in verse number 11, strengthened with all might. Boy, one of the benefits that we get is to be strengthened by God himself to be strengthened by His power. Uh, we, our power today, if you're talking physically, it depends on your body type, how well you exercise your muscles and maintain and control and what age you are. Depends on a lot of that. But if that's not your strength, maybe it's a mental strength. And you, you're smart, you're intelligent, and you use your brains to be your strength. Uh, maybe you're one that's a bully and you could just convince people, uh, you know, but that's your strength. But here we have the strength from God, not a strength that's physical, not a strength that's mental, uh, but a, a true strength that comes from God. Remember what the scripture says about the apostles? It said that uh, they, they, they were, does it say ignorant and unlearned? I don't remember now. I didn't write it down. But then it says they took note they had been with Jesus. Well, it made all the difference that they had been with him. We're strengthened, verse number 11, with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now, I don't know if you have been strengthened with these three things, but we need these three things in our life 
from God to be strengthened. And I wanted to read those again. According to his glorious power, unto all patience. It was a bad day in Paul's day. It was a bad day in the days of the apostle. Jesus had been crucified, buried, rose again. He descended into heaven and they hated Christians. Paul, when he was Saul of Tarsus, hated Christians. And until he got saved, he hated them. Now he's saying that we're strengthened by his glorious power and it says, unto all patience. That's not an easy thing for me. And maybe it is for you, but it's not an easy thing for me. But there are times when the Lord gives me that supernatural patience. It's not all the time that I accept it, but it is many sometimes. And then it says, and long suffering. Patience doesn't necessarily involve you suffering. Long suffering involves you suffering. So you're not just patient when you're strengthened by God. Then when you're suffering for your Christian life, you are long suffering, not by your strength, but by his strength. And then it says with joyfulness. Joyfulness, and I preached two Wednesday nights on joy in the new year. But joyfulness, that's one of the attitudes. That's one of the, uh, the light shining through us is joyfulness, the joy of God in our life. Uh, look, if you will, now at verse number 12, and we're looking at some of the benefits, some of the things that we have in Christ. And uh, sad to say that there are many that don't have these things because they're not Christians, and there are many Christians that don't have them because they're not willing to accept them. Verse number 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. Now, we dealt with this just either last week or a few weeks ago. Hath made, made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We know that's the saints that are in heaven. How are we made meet? Now, here it's not the word meat uh, for a steak or a hamburger or a pork chop, uh, but it's M-E-E-T. That word we normally think about, you go down the road and you meet somebody as you travel. Here, the way the word meet is used is to be made fit, to be made to be acceptable. To be acceptable. Acceptable for what? To be partakers of the inheritance. You know what that means? You don't get good enough to go to heaven. Something doesn't happen in your life where you change yourself and where you make yourself fit to go into eternity in heaven. But he makes us that away. One of the benefits of being in Christ is that he does the work. I believe the last time I spoke on this, we used Ephesians 2 and verse 10, where the Bible says, and we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He does the work of making us fit to go to heaven. You don't do it. Because you quit drinking doesn't make you fit to go to heaven. Because you quit taking drugs, because you quit immorality, because you quit lying, because you quit stealing doesn't make you fit to go to heaven. It's what he does on the inside of your heart and your life. You may remember the story that I told of a man that I uh, was his pastor for a short time, probably 40 years ago, 38, 40 years ago. He came to me one day, uh, his wife and kids were in, uh, she worked in the Christian school, the kids were in the Christian school. And he came in one day and he said, preacher, you got time to talk? I said, yeah. He said, I know I'm a Christian, but he said, I'm not like my wife. I'm not like my kids. He said, I get up every morning and I have to put my religion on just like I have to put a coat on to go outside when it's cold. I said, when did you get saved? And he told me when he made his profession of faith. I said, has there been any change in your life? He said, well, I don't cuss as bad as I used to. And everything that he was saying, he was telling me what he was doing, how he was changing himself. And I said, you know, you need to examine your salvation. 
Don't doubt it. Just examine it, look at it, and see if it's real. Uh, it wasn't long before the economy fell, the oil field fell. They moved back into Mississippi, and uh, because of the, uh, they had, he had to go get another job and things. And I heard about four years later, after his family had busted up, after his kids began to hate him for some of the things that he did, and under stress, he changed. He changed be <clears throat> excuse me, because he wasn't a Christian. He just got worse and worse. <clears throat> and the family completely busted up. And he called me one day. He said, Preacher, I want you to know I hit rock bottom, but I got saved. <clears throat> he said, I didn't understand it before. He said, but I just wasn't a child of God. <clears throat> I'm afraid that's the problem with many people. They try to make themselves fit for heaven. They try to do all the good things and they try to be like the person that they think is a good Christian, but they can't do it because they don't have that strength, that supernatural power of God. They don't have the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Word of God to them is a good thing, but it's not their daily nourishment. They don't take it in on a regular basis. And I'm afraid that's what happens. But here, we're made meet or fit for what? <clears throat> the inheritance in light. Heaven. And unless you have the Lord as your Savior, you're not going to go. We're not going to deal with any of the rest tonight. Let's bow our heads for prayer. We're going to have music. <coughs> Excuse me, no singing tonight, just music. But tonight, has He made you meet, fit to enter in the heavenly kingdom? Are you a true child of God? Is heaven really your home? Only He can do that. The benefit of being in Christ is only He can do that. Now, I'm not saying that Christians don't have problems and they don't backslide. <clears throat> I'm not saying that they don't do the same things <coughs> Excuse me, that unsaved people do because they do. But if you're not a child of God tonight, why don't you come to the Lord and be truly saved? Surrender your heart, your life to Him. <clears throat> be like the sinner man in the Bible who said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let him wash your sins away. He wants to, and he will, if you'll surrender to him. Don't hold on to anything. Just let go and trust him. <clears throat> if you're sincere, you call on him, he'll save you. Child of God, what benefits do you have in Christ? Book of Colossians gives us a few. Those benefits should cause us to be joyful in Him every day. Those benefits should cause us to trust Him more and more. They should cause us to tell others what He means to us. The benefits that we have in Christ out of the book of Colossians. This is not just a list of benefits, but out of the book of Colossians. Colossians, it tells us Christ is all and in all. Nobody else can take His place. Not in your life or anyone's life. He's God the Son. He loves you. All right, thank you. You can look up this way. <clears throat> We're going to take our prayer request. So are there